you cannot directly copy an anime into live action. It doesn't freaking work. It just doesn't work. You can adapt certain things, but you cannot directly lift off what's in anime onto live action. Cowboy Bebop. So look, I made it my duty to watch the anime before the live action. Because, you know, this was something that people had been recommending to me for ages. Like, Cowboy Bebop, Bebop. I was like, oh, okay. Blah, blah. So when I heard they were doing a live action, I was like, you know what? It's on Netflix. Let me watch it. And then let me then go ahead and then watch the live action. And the key to this um, recap is adaptation. Adapt freaking tation. Let me just start here, very simply. You cannot directly copy an anime into live action. It doesn't freaking work. It just doesn't work. You can adapt certain things, but you cannot directly lift off what's in anime onto live action. And I think that is the issue with this live action thing because when you when you watch when I, after watching Cowboy Bebop, it ain't perfect. It's not perfect. But one thing that it is is that wow. It's got a very distinct style, which is why I've always... Anime has its tropes and so forth, but I've always an, um, admired anime over Pixar. I hate Pixar films. There isn't a single Pixar film that I actually like. Oh, I, I like. No, like, I, they're, they're, it's cool. I, I appreciate the artistry, but there's no Pixar film that I like. Bro, One Punch Man is... One Punch Man, that's my my thing. We all know how amazing freaking, freaking Dragon Ball Z is. And in Cowboy Bebop, even though there are bits that I think are a bit cheesy and a bit maybe too Japanese and so forth, I love the artistry, I love the idea, I love the concept, I love the world that, that, that they built, I like the aesthetic, and the music is outstanding. I think it's, I think it's I think Yoko Kano or something who did the music. The music is outstanding, like, what's it called? I think it's like Space Line or something. I already have that song saved on my playlist right now, because, like, that's, it is easily, Easily the best music I've heard for either a cartoon or an anime. I mean, screw that trash as Lion King and so forth. Easily the best. So after I finished that, I was okay, okay, what are these guys going to now do? And this thing with the live action thing. It's only became its own in the last two episodes. In the last two episodes. So this is going to be a little bit spoiler, but it is what it is. It's only became its own in, its, in the last two episodes. Because for because it's 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 ten episodes. For the first first eight episodes, they were literally trying to lift exactly what was in the anime and put it into the live action. From they copied it direct shots, direct shots, direct panels where were, were copied. And this is the issue: is you are adapting something to a totally different medium. You see, I already said to myself that um. Akira, one of the greatest cartoons you'll ever see. Probably the GOAT anime. That can't be adapted. Um, Akira is literally... Akira was made solely for 2D animation and pushed to the very edge of 2D animation. And just the, its visual style and so forth can't be translated into live action. So when you're now trying to adapt Cowboy Bebop, the keyword is you have to adapt. So you want to take the spirit the essentials of it, but there are certain things you have to change that kind of work better for film. Because as I was watching it, I was like, you know what? Something doesn't feel right here. Something just feels odd here. Although the actors did their job, they did really well. I mean, Mustafa Shakir, um, John John Cho, and um, is it Daniela Pineda, they all did, did their jobs well. So, so, so I mean, that was cool. Although there's an actor that I had issues with. But I mean, I think the issue was, and I've just been watching interviews and so forth behind the scenes, they were so obsessed. There was such an obsession about, we've got to keep faithful to anime, we've got to keep faithful to anime, we've got to keep faithful, we have to remain faithful to the fans. And what you've now found is, and you can hear from some of the anime fans, they're like, bro, this is just, this This just comes off as just odd and weird. Like, some fans, are, it's cool, but some fans are, no, this is just odd and weird, because this is what you have to understand. The anime is always going to, going to be there. It's always going to be there. And 
if you directly copy their anime in live action, you it will always come off worse. Because the kinds of shots, the kinds of setups and scenes that were done in the anime only work for 2D animation. And you can't get the same vibe, the same, the same dynamism and the same aura and the same feeling when you not do it in live action. And there are some things that can be done in live action that you can't get in 2D animation. So what they should have done is, because when I was watching Cowboy Bebop, I was like, oh, that that's, can be adapted. Akira can be adapted. One Punch Man can be adapted. But this can be adapted. But you've got to make changes. So you keep the essentials of a crew of three. Keep their personalities. Keep their characters. But what you do is, this, this is like a post-apocalyptic, it feels like a post-apocalyptic world. Think Blade Runner, but in space. Which is what it is. Because they are bounty hunters, but in space. But even when you listen to the soundtrack and the jazz soundtrack, that sounds so much like the score from Vangelis in Blade Runner. So what you do is, you make you, you are very aware that this is in the format of a film. This is in the format of live action. So therefore, you've got to now create something that works with the live action aesthetic because once you now start doing that, oh, let's just copy this shot exactly like how it was in the anime, it, it looks odd. So as I was watching it, you can tell that these guys are trying so hard to do a carbon copy of the anime. And it just comes of looking weird because you trying to copy the same things into this, it, it comes off as odd. And I think the worst thing is, Ed, I think it's Ed, the really crazy girl boy character. I think she's a girl. Um, Ed in um in anime. See, that works in the anime because she's so out there and so wiry and so up and down and so forth. So that works in the anime. But doing that in live action, I was like, you can't have that in live action. Because that character only works for 2D animation. That character not what will work in live action. So let's look, let's see, this show was at its best in its final two episodes. And why was it? They adapted and improved upon stuff in the anime. Because what they did was, we're now going to expand the story of the syndicate and actually develop it and actually refine that story. So the best episode in the entire series was episode 9 where it was going back into Spike's past and talking about his relationship with Vicious and with Julia and just the background into the syndicate and really what happened. That was easily the best episode. And why was that the best episode? They were, were not leaning towards the anime. They were not being slaves towards what the anime was doing. They were being themselves. They were being themselves and they were being true to themselves. And, and it's finally, it was like, wow, you have fun. It's sort of like when like you're like a child, like for the first eight episodes, they were like a child holding on to their mom's hand. And for that episode nine, it's like, wow, you can now walk by yourself. You can now go into the world by yourself without having to, to, to hold your, your mom's hand. And that was it. So I just, I just wish that they had kept that feeling of we're not, create, we're not going to create something our own throughout the entire season. Because what it should have been is develop the whole thing about the syndicates, go deep into the politics of the syndicates all throughout the entire season. And most importantly, I think this is what they should have done is, the thing about Cowboy Bebop is those are individual missions that aren't connected with each other. So it's like, hey, we're going on one mission, on another mission, and each mission is a story in and of itself. Each mission is a beginning, middle, and end in and of, of, of itself. And you learn something about that episode, which is a story in and of itself. So, and I think that they should have done that, but whereas I think they try to connect every single mission together, whereas they should have just focused on really making each episode, because really, in the anime, it's like 26 minutes. But now, if you've got like 40 minutes or 40 plus minutes, you can do that really to develop it, man. So look, overall, I mean, it's weird, man. Um, I would give this like a tier three. It's, it's possible, and I think it has some interesting visuals, but for eight episodes, it just seems too weird. Again, the, the actors did their thing, you know, they performed really well, but it just seemed, to, and I think it was weird because they're trying so hard to copy the anime, but that's episode nine, because that episode nine has like an amazing sequence where Spike goes ahead and just starts shooting all these guys. It's an amazing sequence. I just wish that they had been able to say, yeah, get the spirit of the anime, 
but stand on your own because for me, some I say some anime can't be adapted. Akira can't be adapted. But this, it can be. But you've got to know what you're doing and you've got to be savvy and you've got to have a hook and you've got to come at it with an interesting angle, which is Blade Runner in space and have a better balance between it being serious and have dark humor and make it for the medium of live action. Whereas that we are getting the ideas and so forth and the spirit of it, but you're sort of standing on your own, which is what I believe now. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Tell me what you guys think.